hey guys and welcome to another one of my videos it is spooky season still so today we are drawing a witch cat on a broom and then i will be animating it so guys this particular piece is like one of my most favorite pieces i have done so far i have done many many pieces and this is probably one of my top I would say top five that I've ever created. I am super happy with this one and I'm excited to share it with you guys. I am totally getting better at drawing cute things and they're not so creepy. Like I remember drawing something super cute for my brother and he just looked at it and was like, this is scary, I don't like it. And I am like, oh no, I can't make cute things. Well, finally, I think I'm getting there. I started sketching this little cute cat out and my goal was to make like the ears move the hat ribbons move the broom move the tail all of it and I think I totally succeeded with that you know it's so exciting when you create something and you feel like you're just getting better and you see the progress and you're like oh my gosh this is amazing I've done an amazing job and then what sucks more than anything is then you regress and you're like, what the heck did I just make? It does not look great. I made something amazing and then you kind of regress and you're like, what did I just do? Well, I sometimes feel like that a lot. I gotta be honest. Like I go up and down with my art and I'm pretty sure a lot of artists feel that way too. But when you create something and it turns out awesome, I think that's the most amazing moment and exciting moment whether or not it gets traction online it doesn't matter I feel like I did an amazing job and this is one of those times for sure so what I like to tell artists is like don't quit you know I always post my progress stuff I always post my art even if I don't like it and it just shows that like I go back to it and honestly like I've gone back to pieces that I've hated that I posted like man I just hate this piece but then I go back to it and I'm like it's not that bad it actually looks pretty good so I am I say this all the time real quick I draw basically within layers when I'm animating so if you see the animation part uh, and why I draw the hat into the cat a color color basically inside the cat and do the ribbons inside the hats because when I move it I don't want those gaps and I know I kind of repeat myself to those who watch my channel but that is why I do this and so that's why it looks funky and that's why I'm piecing out the ears and piecing out the hat a little bit differently I'm piecing out the broom and that is why so if you do decide to do procreate dreams or animate or do any sort of vtubing anything you have to do each section by section and that's why it looks funky at first so back to what i was saying artists out there if you feel down about a piece just keep going it might suck give yourself maybe a break i sometimes will give myself a day or two break just to recuperate and then start over again and see hey does it get better and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't there's also been pieces that like i will draw and i'll like it at first i'll post and i'll love it and then i'll look at it later and i'm like oh what did i draw like i don't really like this and maybe that's an amateur thing of me that i do because i think one way some artists do this is they will draw something they'll sit on it and then they'll post it you know after they sat on it for a while and looked at it maybe a day later you know and then they're like hey this doesn't look right maybe i need to correct this and that's something maybe i can start to do well right now my goal is to draw as much as possible for not just for you guys but for me so i can get better and just not sitting too much time not spending too much time on one piece i think is is a good thing with how i'm doing it because like the more that you draw even if some of it stinks and it like it sucks it doesn't look great the more that you draw and the more that you do the better that it'll just get even if like the stuff right now isn't that great and i'm kind of learning that in my art journey right now just draw something just do something try to draw something every day sometimes i don't get to it um just because of real life stuff is happening real life takes over and i don't have the time but i do try to make the time as much as i can to draw something at least something every day at least do a little bit something every day and that's honestly how you get good at anything so here i'm just kind of showing you guys 
what I did. I ended up drawing and I forgot some of the footage of doing what I did up to this point. So I just kind of showed you guys, hey, this is what I got done. And then I went right back into it. I didn't realize I wasn't recording it. So I was like, oh no, I didn't record all of this, but that's okay. Basically you get the gist. I'm just playing with like a lot of the white lines. I'm playing with the colors here. And honestly, like to see the whole process, like if y'all want to see a lot of my process, you can all go watch my other videos. I show a lot of my other process in those videos. So here I'm just trying to create the design where she's kind of flowing in the night sky. I kind of had this galaxy idea where, you know, there's stars and everything, but the galaxies in the back and the purples and the blues. And I just thought it really looked really good with the cat and how she's kind of and also purple. This is the end result of the picture part. And then I go into animating it. So again, this is kind of how I put all of my layers into Procreate Dreams is I just import it from one to the other. It makes it super, super simple if y'all have never done it. And then I get to work. So basically when I first started doing this animation, I wanted the character to be flowing in in the air so she's gonna be kind of bouncing up and down and then i also wanted elements of her to be basically moving as well so it didn't look like a stagnant picture so as you'll see i have basically her moving apart from the background bouncing up and down you'll see it here in a second so again a lot of this is all sped up so if the animation looks kind of funky and like it's super fast in reality it isn't and you'll see it, the end result at the very end what it looks like so it'll all make sense but i speed it up so it's not so boring again i'm still kind of learning procreate dreams i'm still kind of fiddling with it and some of the controls and because of that i don't want this video to be forever because it really would be if i had it all at the normal time that i'm doing this so basically i sped everything up and that's why it looks the way it does my goal with this is to kind of give you the idea of what i'm doing in procreate dreams and then if you guys have more questions y'all can for sure ask them and i can make videos on this but in essence i'm just trying to give you an idea of what i am doing to create the animation so in this portion i grouped the body of the cat separate from the background and that is because I wanted basically the stars, and this is when I'm creating the opacity of the stars uh, in and out, in and out. So it makes it look like the stars are kind of flickering as she's moving around. And then because I group it separately, I'm able to move her separate from the background. So if you make something like this, you want to have a separate group for the background and you want to have a separate group for the character that is moving. And the reason I group the cat together, all together, all the pieces, is because I want the whole cat to be able to fly and to be moving, but also the elements within the group to be moving. And in order to move the entire group, I have to create two groups. So if you guys are getting used to Procreate Dreams, just realize that you might have to group things differently based on how you want the movement to happen. So once I have the flickering down with the stars, I start working on the elements of the hat. So like the ribbon, and then I work on the ears, that sort of thing on the cat. So here, when I started, I had to change the anchor point. And when you create the anchor point, it just kind of shows where the movement is coming from and how to, basically it's like I said, it's an anchor. So you want the flow of like the ribbon. I want the anchor point to be all the way up and to the left. So that's where it, the ribbons are tugging from. Cause if I put it in the middle, as you saw earlier, the movement just looks really weird. And that's why anchor points are very important when you're trying to create movement. You want to create the movement from where it starts and so there's a little little itty bitty cross and you just basically move that cross to where you want your anchor point. Once you have the anchor point set, the rest is pretty easy. Like I have the hat moving with the ribbons and so like I have to create a new anchor point for each ear because I want the anchor point to be closer to the head. And so as I'm moving the ears up and down, I want the movement to come from that area. Hopefully that makes sense. It's very simple thinking honestly it's not hard it's not rocket science 
So essentially all the moving parts that I have is her hat, the ribbons, the ears, and the broom and the tail are the main moving points of the cat. And then I end up finishing up with her eyes. I wanted to have blinking eyes. I've done it one other time with the fox character and I'll probably be doing a video on her as well. That was my first, very first animation. And so this is the second one that I did where she's blinking. It's very simple to do. Basically, once I finish the movements here, basically you have to break up the eyes into sections and then you can use the frame by frame and you can color over each eye closing and then you have to create a new to create a new frame by basically breaking up the eyes down here by the track so you have to create a new track and then you have to basically color the eyes open close open close and basically what i do is i have that repeat so here that's kind of what i'm doing and what makes this frame by frame amazing is you can see what the before looked like and then the after so that you're not guessing hey what does it look what did it look like before so here like i said i can see the before and then I draw the after and then I have to go back and break up the track and then do another one so at first the flip book is kind of confusing if you've never done it before but it gets easier the more that you work it and do it I think the flip book feature is a lot easier if you created the entire thing on procreate dreams but i like to create my characters on procreate before getting into procreate dreams it just makes it easier for me in essence i'm kind of creating a rig i guess you could say a rigged character but the flip book is really for if you like create a picture like a flip book picture and you're trying to create movement based on drawing something over it and then over and over it so then it creates movement that's it's just a different ball game for those of you who don't know, rigging is basically where you take a still image and then you rig it to have movement or even have three dimensions. Or I should say a three dimensional look. And that's essentially what I do with this character. But if you're trying to basically create a flip book, it's more like a movie. Um, traditional movie and I, I think new movies now have more rigging aspects to it but you can use rigging and you can use flipbook and it really just depends on how you want your movement so again this is all sped up that's why it looks kind of funky it's just I sped up drawing the eyes shutting and and spending time on this and so you can see it kind of goes whoa it's super fast well that's not how fast it goes so at the very end of this movie you will see how it actually looks and what it looks like I'm thinking about trying other programs I think procreate dreams is amazing it works really well with procreate but I think there are other programs out there I do want to try I also kind of do want to get better at drawing in the flipbook feature and be able to draw essentially in a movie kind of thing instead of just doing a rig um, Again, this is not a true rig. I would say a true rig you could use in Live 2D, and those are like VTuber true rigs. I'm not doing anything like that. This is just a simple, a simple little rig. There's really so much that I would love to learn. I, I want to learn how to do flipbook animation, and I actually might take some classes or courses or something that helps me with that but this in essence is more like an emote type thing it's just very simplistic i think it'd be really really cool to make a movie i think that you know like an animated movie i think that'd be so cool but i also think it'd be so much work it'd be a lot of work to do that and i know it's very time consuming and time is kind of the thing that keeps me from doing all that so again, this is the picture part, and then here's the animation. I hope you guys like this video. I hope this inspires you to continue to create your own stuff. And uh, if you like this video, like and subscribe. Always love your comments. Always love feedback from you guys. And like I always say, don't quit creating, guys.